Now, I used to be content with that, but then it occurred to me recently that uh, this is one of those fantastic uh, theorems or properties where the converse is true. So if I were to reverse the logic here, if in fact I said to you, um, rather than saying, oh, I know that this is the diameter, that means that this is gonna be 90 degrees, can my logic go in the opposite direction? Can I say, if I know that this is 90 degrees, therefore, that AB has to be a diameter? Now, it turns out that this is true, and I've taught that it is true for, like I said, many years, but it occurred to me that I'd never proven that for students. I'd never actually shown the result uh, and the, the reasoning behind it. And it's super uh, important to actually recognize why things are true and not just accept them, right? Uh, not just because in mathematics that's uh, one of the great things you can do. You can prove things. You don't need to accept some, you know, to take someone else's word for it. You can actually prove it yourself rigorously. Um, but also just in general, it's a logical fallacy that A leads to B also is the same as B leads to A. The converse is not always true. Let me give you a couple of really obvious examples. Suppose I told you you had a quadrilateral of some kind and <clears throat> that quadrilateral um, was a square. So if you know that this is a square, one of the things that you can conclude about it is that all of its sides are going to be equal. So in other words, the logic here is knowing that something is a square tells you that you can deduce that the all sides are equal. Now, that's fine. Uh, that is a very uh, logically sound statement, but it doesn't work in the other direction. Its, it's converse is not necessarily true. If you, just, again, take the idea that there is some quadrilateral and I say, well, instead of knowing that it's a, a square, let me just tell you that all the sides of this mystery quadrilateral are equal, does that necessarily mean that you have a square? And the answer is, of course not, because what you might have is something like this. Let's see how accurately I can do it. Ooh, not very accurately at all. Let's see, that's better. Uh, well, let's, let's shift that and make that a little more accurate. I think that's pretty reasonable looking. So what I've got here is a side where, uh, sorry, a quadrilateral where uh, all the sides are equal, but in fact, it is clearly not a square. I guess we would just call this a rhombus, right? So what I'm trying to point out here is that the converse, just reversing the statements and seeing what happens to the logical flow is not actually true. I mean, it might be, you know, if you put all the right angles in, you will get a square, but it isn't always, right? So logic can go from one side to the other, but not flow in the opposite direction. Now you might think, oh, that's pretty obvious, like it doesn't need to really be said, but there are some cases where it's not as obvious. For example, I'm not gonna do this to scale, but uh, you get the idea. Suppose I gave you, I presented you with three parallel lines, and I said, okay, here, here are three lines, and uh, I, I'm going to uh, mark them as parallel, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slice across them with two transversals, right? So if I have a transversal, say here, and then I have another one, put it over in this direction. Okay, so these transversals just literally cut across, that's what the word transversal means, my parallel lines. Now, supposing you had some measurements, if say, for example, you measured this uh, little interval here to be two, um, this one here is the one that I'm talking about, and then you uh, measured this one and found that it was four, it was double that length. Uh, what these lengths are called, by the way, uh, these are what we call intercepts, which is <laughs> sort of confusing because you're like, wait a second, I thought intercepts were like coordinates in coordinate geometry uh, that are where things intersect together. Um, the overlapping meaning is that they come from an intersection, but in this context, the intercepts are actually the lengths themselves that I've highlighted here in blue and in orange, okay? Now, uh, there is a theorem that says if you have parallel lines, what they do is they preserve the ratios between the intercepts, uh, by which I mean, if say for example you measure this intercept over here as three, so it's kind of up between these two parallel lines at the top, then you could know, uh, without even measuring it, uh, that this intercept down here would have the same ratio as the other intercepts. So you can see here, this is this orange length, I've just made it double, the blue length up here, uh, and so this orange length over here is also going to be double its corresponding intercept. So the way we would say this is uh, parallel lines preserve the ratios of intercepts. So in here, the logic runs like so. Parallel lines gives you uh, equal ratio intercepts. 
That's not very good grammar, but you get the idea. Okay, now again, in this case, and I, I gave you this example before, right? This is another important instance of where the converse is not true. It feels like it ought to be. Uh, it feels intuitive that if you've got equal ratio intercepts, then maybe that also means that you will have that same set of parallel lines. But it's not true, and I can really easily show you that with a counter example. Suppose I have three lines now that are definitely, definitely not parallel. So if I have one flying off in this direction, and then one down here. Okay, so I think it's fairly uncontroversial that these three lines are not parallel. But now, if I cut across them with an, an appropriately placed pair of transversals, like so, something like this, right? If I compare here, right, I can say, hey, look at this uh, intercept and compare it to this one. Suppose that these were both equal to three. If I have a look at the other pair, and I'm just, suppose I'm just doing measurements, right? I look at this one, and then I have a look at this one. Well, just eyeballing it, it wouldn't be that difficult to create a set of intercepts like this, where this was five, and this was five. So in other words, what I have is uh, intercepts with equal ratios. This is a one-to-one -one ratio, and so is this one. But that doesn't mean, you can't deduce from that, that the three lines I started with are parallel. They're quite obviously not. So in this case, just taking these ideas over here, if I were to swap around, you know, try and reverse the direction of the logical flow, it turns out to not be true that equal ratio intercepts mean there are parallel lines. And this is an example where I had to kind of manufacture a counterexample that made it very obvious, but it wouldn't be as obvious as this square rhombus thing, right? So what I'm trying to say is when you know something is true, you have to be really careful with the converse. It is sometimes true. Um, Pythagoras' theorem, you know, if you know that it's right angled, you will get that. Uh, some of the squares on each of the different sides and the reverse is true. If you know the sums of the squares and so on, you can prove that a triangle is right angled. And in this case, right, I'm about to prove that if uh, you know that that angle uh, on the circumference is 90 degrees, you can know that the chord that produced that angle or created that angle is going to be the diameter. It has to be the diameter. Um, I can prove that that converse is true, but you shouldn't just assume it, right?